else? Make With Valentine's Day around the corner, I thought we'd make some heart-shaped cookies today. So I dug out my heart-shaped cutters. And we've got some off-white clay. It's kind of a, a beige -y ecru color. You can use this. I, I had some leftover clay, so I'm not sure exactly what color this is. It just looked about right when I looked at it. So I've got it rolled through my pasta machine at the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And for a Barbie size, we're going to use this this cookie cutter. And it's, you can kind of see how big it is my finger. I'll try and make a right, put in the description what the size is. Just cut through your clay. I've cut a couple of them already. And this one, they don't like to come out. So I just push them out with a, the end of a ball stylus. And once again, as usual, I'll be baking on my usual paper plate. And this is one of those really cheap paper plates that doesn't have any kind of finish on it. You know, the really, really, really cheap ones. And that's for the Barbie size. Now let's do some 112 scale for our dollhouse. For that, we need to roll our clay thinner. And on my pasta machine, about the number three setting is pretty good for this. And I've got the smallest of the Kempfer cutters in the heart shape. And we'll cut out some of these guys and put them on our plate. And I used to have another cutter that was kind of halfway in between these two sizes because this is a little small, but the next size up I have is the bigger one. So I need to find that one. And we're just going to put some of these on our plate. And there's lots of ways to decorate these. And I'll show you a couple of different ones. And my recommendation is that you get online, either dig out well, either dig out a book that has some Valentine cookies, or just get online and do a search like in Google for images of Valentine cookies or other shaped cookies. And you'll get some great ideas for how to decorate. Alright, so we've got some cookies on our plate. Let's take the edge of your finger because when cookies are baked, they kind of poof up. So we don't want these edges really, really sharp. We want them kind of rounded. And that will also stick these down a little bit to our plate, which will help. And don't worry about fingerprints in these because we're going to be putting some icing on them and different things. So. So make sure they roll over, roll on them, and kind of get them rounded. Alright, now we need to get out our chalk. And we're using two colors of chalk today. We're using our yellow ochre, which is a golden yellow. And I just use, I have one of these really cheap little palettes that you buy for mixing paint in at the craft store. I think it costs like, I don't know, it was under a dollar, maybe 59 cents, 69 cents, something like that. This yellow ochre, we're also going to use this kind of light brown, kind of a, a reddish brown color. And we will start with our yellow ochre. And I use, these are just makeup brushes, eyeshadow brushes from the dollar store. And we're going to brush pretty much over the whole cookie with the yellow ochre. We want to, we want these guys to look like they've been baked. Or if you wanted to do a scene where you had some baked cookies and some not, then just cut these and don't round the edges. And leave them the way they are. And they'll look like just cookies that aren't baked yet. And just get a dusting of color. And then a fresh brush with this brown. We don't want too much of this brown unless we want to look like we burned our cookies. And kind of come around just the edges. Not too much on the top, just mainly around the base. And some of them you can come up a little bit on the tops. You want to look like the bottoms are browned. And remember, I almost always bake on the paper plate because then the backs of my cookies or whatever I bake doesn't get all shiny. Be really careful doing the smaller ones because it's really easy to get way too much color on them. 
Okay, so when you get those all brushed, take them to the oven and bake them like you would any other clay. Check your clay package because my my latest batch of translucent Sculpey says, well, this one says 230 for 30 minutes, but that's for a quarter inch thick clay. This isn't for a quarter inch thick, so 230 degrees, probably seven, eight minutes for these guys, and they'll be t completely baked. Oh, I forgot to say, I was going to say, got this set over here. Now, if you want sugar cookies that just have like sugar on them, which is, I do those a lot in real size for Valentine's Day. I'll just cut some quick sugar cookies and I'll just sprinkle some sugar. Well, this, bake. The, put this on before you bake them. This is just some of that colored sand that you get to do sand art with. And it was in, I got a whole bunch of, they were little tiny packages when I got them. I put them in a sandwich bag because they all broke. But they're inexpensive. You get them at the craft store. And they make great sugar. So that'll look like a sugar cookie. So we'll bake these off. I've got some here that I baked off and a few I've started to get decorated. Now here's the ones with just the sugar on them. They look like little sugar cookies. And then I have some that I've iced with different things. And I'll show you a little bit how I did some of these. That's a lot easier to get detail. The bigger the cookie, the easier it is to get detail. The smaller cookies, we're going to have to just kind of do a lot less detail. Let's see if I can get it over here where you can see those a little better. Hopefully you can see them. I'll try and take some good photos and put up on the video too. But for our frosting today, I'm using the Scribbles fabric paints. These are 3D paints. They're called Scribbles 3-Dimensional Shiny, and this is hot chocolate. It's a great chocolate color. I use this for chocolate frosting all the time. I also have Pink Surprise, and I have Christmas Red, and I've got my Iridescent White Mist because I can't find my white one. I have a regular white one somewhere, but I can't find it. So let's do, first let's do one of the big ones. Let's see. Well, let's do, let's put white on it first to do white. Like I said, get online, look up, oops, this is not giving me a very good white. The regular white is much better than this, and I wish I knew where I had put it. I couldn't find it this morning. And to spread it flat, I've got some of these really cheap plastic palette knives. I use them for all different kinds of things, and I find that really works. You could use your finger. You could use, I bet, a plastic knife from the, you know, the plastic picnic wear would probably work really well. Put a layer of, of paint on there. Wipe your tool so you can use it again. And let's put, let's put some red lines on that one. So put some red out in a container. I've got just a little plastic container here. This actually, dog food came in this, so I wash them out and save them. They're, they're great for disposable little containers. Just watch what you, you know, check your kitchen for things that would normally go in the trash and clean them out and use them. We'll make some red lines. Because we've got the white on there. We'll wipe. This is my dental pick again, of course. We'll wipe that clean. Now, let's do like that. And now another line this way. And that way. And that way. And you get a kind of a cool paint look. Um, you can do anything like that. If you want to do the small ones, you're going to use something small. I used the end of one of these little knitting needles. Just dipped it in the red in the paint and just kind of coated it that way. They are harder to get much design on because they're really tiny. But if you're really careful, you can come up with some pretty cool designs on those too. Um, 
put some chocolate and some white in my little container here. And you could sprinkle some more of the sand over the wet paint if you wanted to do that. Uh, I know a lot of people use the little micro beads. My problem with those is look at the scale of them. They're really big. If your dolls were to eat those, they would probably choke on them. So kind of think only use the very, very smallest ones and don't put very many on. Because that that would be a really hard thing to swallow if you were that size. I try to keep things in scale. When I'm making food, I try to look at it in comparison to the doll and say, hmm, if that's on her food, could she really eat that? And a lot of those little micro beads, they're just way too big. They don't look right. Let's go back and forth here. here. Let's see, I wonder if we can do... Let's try one of these little ones. Let's do a pink... I'm going to try something here I haven't tried before, so I'll put pink on. Always wipe your tool right away. I keep a wet wipe in one hand. That way I can wipe the tool right away. Let's get some pink. Put some red on there. We need something even thinner than the dental pick for this. There. Well, that kind of worked. But anyway, like I said, just play with it. You can practice your designs on your paper plate or even on your work tile. And play with what the paint does until you figure out how the paint works. Um, let's see, let's do... Yeah, let's do this. Let's do... You can also do like dots. You could either do them directly out of here, or you could put your paint out and do the dots with your tool, whatever you're most comfortable with. Now this would be kind of neat to let this part dry and then fill in the center with another color. That would be pretty. But just play with them. I'll um, try and get some close-up pictures of the ones I've done. Have fun, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!